Hello and welcome to this video supplement on the Medici Lecture. Are you fully charged and ready to go, HD? This HD 77 units deuterium tritium fusion core does not require recharging. Of course not. What good would it be then? It wouldn't. I do not understand the nature of your question. Never mind. Inform us on the Medici's. Compliance. The Albixis could not hold on to power forever in Florence, and when they made mistakes, their longtime rivals, the Medicis, were there to exploit their failures. The Medicis were wealthy and influential, and were in good standing with the Catholic Church. Good. Now, tell us about Cosimo. Cosimo Medici came to prominence early in the 15th century, in Florence. In that day and age, Florence had a sort of democracy set up to govern its denizens. Cosimo never ran for office, but his wealth could influence votes. In many ways, he was the de facto shot caller in the city, despite having no such title. Even the Pope recognized that Cosimo was king in all but name. He must have made enemies. But of course, in 1433 Cosimo's growing influence inspired his rivals to plot against him. Their plan worked out, and they had Cosimo thrown into prison, accused of failing the Florentine state in matters of warfare. Cosimo managed to escape his jail time though, and went into exile instead. Isn't it always that way with the powerful? While in exile, Cosimo plotted how to regain his power. He traveled to Venice and took all of his money with him. The monetary vacuum he created was so great that it destabilized the city, and the political leaders of Florence were forced to lift the ban of exile. Cosimo returned to Florence the next year, victorious. I find it interesting that Cosimo had access to his wealth and estate in exile. Indeed, but one wonders how the opposition could have taken it from him. Who could stand before Cosimo Medici? As it turns out, no one. After his exile in return, Cosimo made it his mission in life to obliterate his competition. He pulled strings, made bribes and leveled threats, all of which would help him reconsolidate his power. In the end, he had managed to squash all opposition to his influence. Once again, and more than ever, Cosimo was king of Florence. Without ever having to wear a crown. Just so. Despite his scheming ways, he was supposed to be a devout man. In practice, he brought peace to the region as he micromanaged many aspects of its rule. Amidst this peace and prosperity, the ideals of humanism were also taking hold. Cosimo's Florence was ripe for Renaissance. So, he was into art as well, eh? Very much so. Cosimo's good business sense allowed him to go from merely rich to grossly wealthy. He was a major patron of the arts. He spent much of his fortune on paintings, sculptures, and wondrous buildings. Cosimo himself is credited with the following statement, to take quest, take Jose Mijan, no de to lepi, you grand desad disfazione. English, you hunk of scrap, tell us in English. Compliance, all those things have given me the greatest satisfaction and contentment because they are not only for the honor of God, but are likewise for my own remembrance. For fifty years, I have done nothing else but earn money and spend money, and it became clear that spending money gives me greater pleasure than earning it. End quotation. Well, who doesn't like spending money? Computers have no use for your human concept of currency. Never mind. Now, tell us about Lorenzo. By your command, Cosimo lived out his days lording over Florence. His son ruled for a short time, but soon died and Lorenzo Medici took control of the political landscape. Lorenzo would rule over Florence throughout much of what is recognized as the Italian Renaissance, and was known as Lorenzo the Magnificent. Like his grandfather before him, he was a shrewd businessman, behind-the-scenes politician and a grand patron of the arts. Lorenzo seems to have inherited Cosimo's gifts. Indeed, he was groomed for power. His training allowed him to hold sway over the city, even while he when he was 20 years old. For the time, he was incredibly successful for such a young person. He must have made enemies. Oh yes, the Pazzi family hated the Medicis, and they teamed up with Pope Sixtus IV in order to do something about it. On Easter Sunday in 1478, a group of Patsy assassins attacked Lorenzo and his family as they prayed in the Cathedral of Florence. The attackers managed to murder Lorenzo's brother Giuliano, but Lorenzo himself escaped with only a stab wound, as depicted in the following video. Well, gosh, they never tried to kill Cosimo. They only threw him in jail. Man. The failed assassination attempt essentially caused the Pazzi name to be disgraced and shunned. Pope Sixtus IV, however, was not ready to give up. He excommunicated Lorenzo. 
which meant that Lorenzo was technically no longer allowed to participate in Catholic activities such as Mass or Communion. He also tried to put Florence under his direct jurisdiction, ousting the entire Florentine government. Which Lorenzo wasn't even a part of anyways, if you will recall. When the Pope's actions turned out to have little to no results, he got frustrated and tried to form an alliance with the King of Naples. Together they tried to invade Florence. Lorenzo was unfazed however, and he rallied the Florentines to his cause. He also called in support from the ruling family of Milan, the Sforzes. The war dragged on endlessly. Nothing the Pope did seemed to have an effect on Lorenzo's power. It wasn't until a bit later that Lorenzo himself traveled to Naples and worked out the peace agreement. The war had ended, and in the ensuing diplomatic discussions, Lorenzo managed to secure some constitutional changes that furthered his power even more. Once again, control of Florence was firmly in the hands of the Medici. Lorenzo certainly sounds like an impressive individual. Just as his grandfather before him, once he had reclaimed his position of influence, he maintained peace and prosperity in the region. He was even able to keep France and the Holy Roman Empire from expanding their spheres of influence into Italy. Finally, he funded the arts and allowed the Renaissance to flourish with an abundance of wealth that he gained through maritime trade with the Ottoman Empire. Who are some of the artists that he patronized, HD? Lorenzo worked with a great many artists, but two that are worth mentioning now are Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. This concludes a brief history of the Medici domination of Florence. Good. Thank you for watching.